Hey, Calvary family. I'm excited to share with you about the spiritual practice of writing. And I would like to begin by reading a couple of Bible verses. The first one comes from Psalm 45, verse 1. My heart overflows with a goodly theme. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is like the pen of a ready scribe. And I love this because um, it reminds me that when we open our hearts to God's goodness, that that goodness is wanting to flow out of us. And in this case, hopefully through the practice of writing. And also, I wanted to share something from the Psalms because the Psalms are very poetic. And so hopefully it can be an inspiration for you if you're hoping to uh, give, give a try at some poetry writing. Um, the other one is from Matthew 13. And it's at the, at the end of the chapter. And as a reminder, this, this chapter was the one filled with many parables. The parable of the sower, uh, the weeds among the wheat, the parable of the mustard seed. And it concludes, well, almost concludes here at verse 51. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. And what I like about this is, first of all, that we know that Jesus taught through storytelling and those stories were written down by his followers, by his scribes. And to be a scribe um, is to be a public servant and a teacher and we have the value of what was written and we have the agency today uh, given by God, I believe, to continue to be scribes, um, to continue to, to create and co-create with God in that way. So here's a quote uh, by Henry Nouwen about the spiritual discipline of writing. Writing can be a true spiritual discipline Writing can help us to concentrate, to get in touch with the deeper stirrings of our hearts, to clarify our minds, to process confusing emotions, to reflect on our experiences, to give artistic expression to what we are living, and to store significant events in our memories. Writing can also be good for others who might read what we write. Quite often, a difficult, painful, or frustrating day can be redeemed by writing about it. By writing, we can claim what we have lived and thus integrate it more fully into our journeys. Then writing can become life-saving for us and sometimes for others too. So writing is a great way to explore the unknown. Um, it's a great way to process our grief and the pain of our souls. Um, and I think writing is an act of faith in how we try to ponder the mystery of God and life. Um, it can also be a sort of catalyst for untangling our complex thoughts and sorting through emotions, um, developing new ideas. So, and also writing is a big a uh, vulnerable task. It can feel risky to express parts of our inner selves. So I encourage you to be bold, but also to recognize when you need to take a step back um, and when, when writing feels too tender. That's okay. But listen to your deep longings and trust what's surfacing and be gentle with yourself. As you write, be present to the movement through your pen and your fingers on the keyboard. Um, pay attention to what's stirring inside, what's challenging you, and don't forget to breathe. Breathing is actually an important part of the writing process as well. 
And sort of like in meditation, give yourself grace when you come across a writing block. Give yourself permission to make mistakes. Um, Cause you might write something and be like, I don't know where this came from, or this was not what I originally had in mind. Um, but that honesty and compassion allows you to more freely write and to get um, more in touch with yourself and deeper into discovery and expanding your expression. And kind of tied into that, I have another quote from Anne Lamont to read. Tidiness makes me think of held breath, of suspended animation. Perfectionism is a mean, frozen form of idealism, while messes are the artist's true friend. What people somehow forgot to mention when we were children was that we need to make messes in order to find out who we are and why we are here. If something inside of you is real, we will probably find it interesting and it will probably be universal. So you must risk placing real emotion at the center of your work. Write straight into the emotional center of things. Write toward vul vulnerability. Risk being unliked. Tell the truth as you understand it. If you're a writer, you have a moral obligation to do this and it is a revolutionary act. Truth is always subversive. And then later on she says, I heard a preacher say recently that hope is a revolutionary patience. Let me add that so is being a writer. Hope begins in the dark, the stubborn hope that if you just show up and try to do the right thing, the dawn will come. You wait and watch and work. You don't give up. And that's from uh, her book, Bird by Bird, Some Instructions on Writing and Life. I highly re recommend this book for writers. So there are many different ways to write, whether it's through journaling or storytelling, um, poetry and prose. Um, sometimes I write about my dreams. So I'm gonna give you a couple of uh, prompts to help you get started. So listen to these ideas. Name what is enough for you. If you could tell your teenage self or your child self anything, what would that be? What are you most grateful for right now? Sometimes I get angry with God about dot, dot, dot. I feel God's presence when. What I need from God right now is. Um, you might consider writing a prayer. Write a prayer of protection. Or um, you might write yourself a love letter. You might write to someone or to a situation that you're grieving. Write about your legacy. What kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? Or it could be something as simple as what moment stood out to you today? And then how can I make that small moment or big moment into a prayer or even a poem? And going back to the dreams, um, I think dreams are sometimes just dreams. You know, they're just weird conglomerations of the experiences that we've had recently or in the past, and they don't particularly have any meaning. But sometimes I think a dream that really sticks with us might be trying to, well, tell us something or we can discover some kind of meaning in it. Um, and one of the things that I learned and by the way, I think the best interpreters of our dreams are ourselves. And one of the things I learned in dream work with a therapist was an idea that when you have a dream, to pick out an object that was in that dream and imagine what that object might be telling you if it could talk. So for example, I have a lot of reoccurring dreams about being in caves and 
one of them I was in a wet, drippy, cold cave and there was a lantern hanging in the upper right corner. And so I began to write from the perspective of the lamp as if it was talking to me in the dream. So it can be kind of fun to see what comes out of that. And just to kind of share in the vulnerability of, of writing, I'm gonna share with you a poem that I wrote. This was a poem that I wrote after I went for a run at night under a full moon. And I was really thinking about the relationship between humans and the environment and the earth and the universe. So this is called Lunar Eye. I see the moon tonight. I recognize the moon, shadow, revelation, illumine. I realize the moon, cold and colorless in beauty. I fathom the moon, a comfortable mystery. I absorb the moon, spoken in gray, I understand. Yet in recalling my colors, the moon sees me tonight. So another quote I wanna share from Anne Lamott as we conclude. This business of becoming conscious of being a writer is ultimately about asking yourself, how alive am I willing to be? Writing is indeed a gift from God. It's a gift for being able to deal with our truest selves. So open a journal, grab a pen, open up your laptop and write. God bless your endeavors.